Welcome to beautiful Los Angeles, California, where it's mostly sunny. Been a little bit on and off today. But guess what? We've got two exciting vehicles. This is the future of eco-friendly vehicles from Hyundai, starting with the vehicle beside me, which is the brand new Nexo. This is a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. Later on this afternoon, we're going to be driving a Kona EV. And you may have noticed I've got this guy beside me. This is Brian Chow. You may recognize him from Everyday Reviews, sometimes collaborator with Sweet and Sour here on Motormouth. So we are going to get into this thing and take it for a drive. Let's go. And I'm driving first. All right. <laughs> All right, so Brian, normally when you hook up with Zach, you guys are sweet and sour, but I'm thinking since I'm in the beer beer business, we go lager and ale. Lager and ale. And are you ale or lager? I, I prefer <laughs> a lager. Oh, so well, that, that works then, because work? I'm I'm an ale man, I think, so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go for for ale. You be lager, I'll right. be ale. <laughs> lager is actually more complex, isn't it? Well, if you want to get technical, which maybe is appropriate considering we're reviewing the most complex vehicle I've ever driven in my life, then, well, I think there's a little more complexities to ale, at least in the aroma and the in the flavor. There, but okay. uh, right. well, I think we're, we're going down a rabbit hole here. Yeah, right. uh, <laughs> so why people are actually tuning in, uh, we're behind the wheel of two pretty cool vehicles today. This is the Nexo, which is Hyundai's new hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. So before you remember, they had the Tucson fuel cell vehicle. Uh, I think they only at their peak had 12 of those on the road. So kind of a low volume car. And that was that, that was a Tucson that was converted into a, this fuel cell vehicle. This right. is a standalone uh, ground up fuel cell vehicle that they've, they've designed and it's, I'm pretty impressed so far. It is uh, designed to be their technological showpiece, they called it last night. So this has uh, obviously sophisticated technology, sophisticated technology underneath the hood. Uh, but also it has all their next gen safety tech and you know, even the materials on the inside, not only to my eye, do they look pretty nice, they feel nice, but they're all ecologically friendly. So that, that metal, all this, the rubber, the leather kind of material here is all like low carbon footprint production. And they got sugar yeah. cane things, you know, yeah. You could, bamboo. You could, yeah, bamboo. This is bamboo. The headliner's bamboo. So let's get to brass tacks. The power plant, which is what makes this different from everything else on the road, is a hydrogen fuel cell. And it's really, really complicated. And I'm not even going to try to explain the science. But basically, there is a, an electrochemical reaction happening underneath the hood when you pass uh, ambient air by hydrogen. That creates energy, uh, electrical energy, heat, and <laughs> and water vapor. So, and you're basically charging an onboard battery with that, which then uh, propels the vehicle forward. So, you, I, I think it is a, a 95. Oh, geez, no, we're getting too technical here. Essentially, it's <laughs> it's like an electric vehicle, except you don't have to charge it. The the, the fuel cell is powered by hydrogen and charges it. Right. And and the byproduct is what? Water. Water. Water vapor. Yeah. So how many horsepower? 160 horsepower, 291 foot-pounds of torque. Okay. Those are total max output numbers. Is it fast? Absolutely not. It, it, <laughs> it, it, it actually feels faster than what it probably is because yeah. of the torque. The zero to 100 time, I think, is uh, just under 10 seconds, Yeah. which on paper is uh, pretty miserable. Uh, however, it does have that torque kick. so you kind of glide forward in complete silence. And it, you're right, it does feel like it has more guts than I think it, it may actually have on paper. And the the benefit here uh, is you charge it or you, you fill it like you would a normal car. It takes five minutes, just over five minutes to yep. fill it up to full. That's at 10,000 PSI. Uh, the downside of that is there is no infrastructure for this in North America. You've got California infrastructure, very limited. You've got a couple of places in British Columbia and in Quebec, and everywhere else in Canada, you can buy one, but you're kind of screwed in terms of refilling. Even the center of the universe, Toronto doesn't even have I, I know, as a Toronto wow. resident, I take that statement very seriously, and I have to say <laughs> we're, we're disappointed that we can't buy one of these things. So when it comes to how this vehicle performs, I'm gonna say this again, it's kind of like a normal car. This has a independent rear suspension, seems to handle the bumps, 
uh, with ease. It's comfortable. It's very quiet, uh, not just because there's no engine noise, but because they've gone to great lengths to insulate this yes, thing. Very, very quiet. NVH, typically a, a challenge with these cars because you don't have that sort of ambient audio track, uh, the engine. You have to be even yeah. more, more quiet for sure. So they've done some reinforcing there, but this feels like a solid vehicle and you can expect the price when they release it to be up there. And we've been bickering about this today. Prob I think it's gonna be up there. $70,000? 70 plus. Maybe more? Yeah. Right, so Hyundai uh, has brought us here, but they haven't given us any pricing for, for this particular car yet. So we're gonna find out probably in the next month, it's month coming, or so. It's coming soon. All right. Final thoughts before we get into the uh, Kona Electric? Well, uh, it all depends on what this thing costs. It yeah. really is. Yeah. If it's lower, if the price is lower, you know, it's, it's going to really sway my opinion differently. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't. I like the. I like the vehicle. I like what they've done. This it looks like a very polished product that they've, they've yeah. produced here for sure. Nail on the head, and I would add to that the other big question mark for me is infrastructure. I I can't buy this. Even if I had the money and I wanted to buy one of these things tomorrow, I can't realistically buy one because where the hell do I charge it? Now, even if you live in BC like you do, yeah. I mean, how many charging stations are there? There's a couple. There's a, cu a couple. And one of them's actually yeah. by my place, actually. So. Okay, so bad example. <laughs> but, <laughs> but for me anyways, and for most uh, you know, most people living in, in Canada or North America in general, realistically for you to buy one of these things, it's, it's gonna be a bit of a stretch. So this, is, this would be for early adopters, people who really care about their ecological footprint being reduced, and people who wanna stand out and do something different, and probably only as a second or third car. Well, maybe, a, maybe it's a, a corporate car. You yeah, know, fleet vehicle. Or fleet vehicle. Right. That, that'd be a very good uh, vehicle for it. That makes sense. Yeah. So next time you see us, we will be in the Kona Electric, which I'm a little bit more excited about because I think it will be the more relevant vehicle for Canadians. It's a mainstream vehicle right. for sure. So let's turn around here and go ahead and jump in that Kona. So through the magic of video editing, we're now in a different car. This is the Kona EV, fully electric plug-in model. So they've taken their most successful uh, small crossover vehicle and they've electrified it. So we've got a 64 kilowatt hour battery below our feet, which is good for the equivalent of about 201 horsepower and 291 foot pounds of torque. And Brian, hang on. <laughs> we've been commenting on for the past hour how quick this thing feels. And again, on paper, it's about as fast as the 1.6 turbo. So zero to 100, I think is seven and a half seconds. Around there. Yeah, but in the real world, you get this like quiet sh uh, torque shove that uh, has become uh, pretty familiar in the world of EVs. That's like so pleasing. From a standstill, you gotta be careful. You can get a lot of wheel spin actually. Wheel spin, uh, uh, torque steer, I, I think has been a bit of a problem, yep. but we had a couple of real life scenarios merging on highways where we needed a, a bit of oomph and it was there. So this is, this is not wanting for power, certainly. Another thing, uh, and they're really hanging their hat on this, yeah, this 415 kilometers of range. It's, that's, that's a class leading. Class right? leading, uh, starting to compete with some of the big boys up in sort of Tesla land, and those go for, as we know, a lot more money. Yeah, they, you know, like it, it's, it's definitely better range than the, the, uh, the Econo Tesla, the Model 3 that we right. can't get yet, but uh, it's supposed to, but 415, yeah, it's, that's amazing. And certainly better than the competitors, which uh, this is an interesting subject because there really aren't any direct competitors given that this is a crossover body style, but there's the Bolt. And then we've got what, the Kia Soul EV? Yep. And what else, really? Well, they're saying that this is the the very first subcompact full electric vehicle. And you know what the, the most amazing thing is, is they've added this huge battery system to this vehicle, yet it doesn't take up any room for your interior volume space. No, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, so you're getting all the capacity uh, you'd want out of the back. Um, pretty usable. Now, I will say, I'm a tall driver. You and I differ a little bit on that front. I do feel a little bit crammed into here. I kind of feel like I'm driving it a little bit like a school bus. And in the back, when I've got my driver's seat in a place that's comfortable for me, it is a little bit tight for me in the back. So kids, no problem. Probably sort of average height adults, no problem. But it is a, a subcompact crossover. So if you're lanky, you're gonna have a little bit of trouble. Yeah, you have to remember what, what segment it really is, right? Right, right. But it's, it's class competitive in, in that area anyways. 
So I was a big fan of that Nexo, which I thought really blended that futuristic look with a design language that we recognize. Yeah. Uh, not as excited about the look of this thing. I like the standard Kona, but this has got the wheels and the grill that I'm not thrilled about. Yeah, they make those aero wheels. And I, I'm telling you, I would trade some actual range to just put some regular wheels on it. It would look better. Yes, and I mean, on the, on the inside, I think they've done a good job there. Yeah. Um, it is definitely a departure from the standard Kona. Uh, the big difference is down here in the center cluster where in the normal Kona, you have the gear lever. Of course, there's no need for that, being that this is a sort of single drive uh, transmission, if we want to call it that. So this is cleaned up and definitely resembles the Nexo. So it's a uh, lots of buttons going on, looks very sort of futuristic down here. It's a pretty decent material. And I think that's echoed throughout the rest of the cabin where it's not as nice or as premium as that Nexo, but we could talk about price point. It's going to be a lot cheaper. It should be. Should be a lot cheaper. There is no pricing yet though. <laughs> On pricing, however, you can expect that it's going to be class competitive. To me, that means forty to $50,000. It's going to be competitive with the Bolt, for sure. That's that's our right. one main competitor because of the range, for sure. So yeah, between 40 and 50. This is the ultimate, so uh, like we said, it has everything. You know. So every one of these is going to come with uh, heated steering wheel, heated uh, seats, uh, but you've got to upgrade into the ultimate, which is what we're in now, to get the LED lights, to get the leather seating services, the cooled seats. Head-up display. Uh, the sunroof, which we, uh, we have closed because it's super sunny right now. Um, so well-equipped vehicle, and I know last night at the uh, at the presentation, uh, they said they wanted to price this in a, in a competitive way and get you into the base model uh, with a lot of standard equipment because Hyundai, after all, has been known to cram a lot of value into their cars. Oh, hands, hands down for sure. So another big benefit of the EV over the hydrogen fuel cell vehicle is charging infrastructure. There are over 5,000, I believe, stage two chargers uh, in Canada. For me, if I'm, you know, my use case for this would be that I need to have regular access to a charging network to get up to my cottage, which is pretty far away from my house. And we finally have that infrastructure in Ontario and it's getting better and better and better all year round. So you can buy one of these, especially if you're near a major urban center and, and actually uh, you don't have to worry too much about range anxiety. It was fascinating to spend time, albeit brief, behind the wheel of two vehicles approaching the same problem from very different directions. The Nexo fuel cell vehicle is limited in application, mostly due to the scarcity of filling stations, but the Kona EV is much more practical today. We can buy it, we can charge it. This is a relevant vehicle. It builds on what I already like about the gas-powered Kona, but it adds in class, leading electric range, and dare I say, better performance and a superior ride quality. Now, Hyundai has promised competitive pricing, and I think this will really determine the success of the product. Assuming we end up in the mid 40s, I think this is a very compelling package. I look forward to spending more time with this Kona EV, hopefully building on what has been a very strong first impression.